Barry Larkin's replacement, Pokey. Reese gets all of this one against Ricky Bonus, who was bad. Reese's third homer of the year. Reds were up 1-0. Bottom two, same score. Reggie Sanders on first. Eddie Tobinsey at the plate. Tobinsey knocks one to left. Yamil Benitez thinks he has a shot. Is his leap time nicely? Mm, good try. Two-run home run. Tobinsey's 10th of the year. Reds up 3-0. Brett Tomko pitching very well. Early on, Tomko getting Jed Hansen on the check swing in his first at bat. In his next at bat, Tomko gets Hansen again, this time swinging. Tomko struck out nine and six and two thirds, one shy of his personal best of 10 Ks, and he did get away with five walks, and the Reds win it six to three. Yes, in the third inning, half of the roof to the Orioles' dugout collapses. Nobody was hurt, but Mike Messina did enjoy the sideshow, I think. Top of the fifth, scored tied at three, Cal Ripken. Still bothered by back spasms, but you never know it. With one out, runners at the corners, Ripken is no beanie baby. His 16th home run of the year at 6-3, Birds. Bottom six, same score, Brian Williams pitching to Greg Council. One out, runners on first and second, and Council ripping it down the line. Two runs would score on that, a triple for one of the Marlins' most important players in the second half of the season. Marlins were within one. Next batter, Jim Eisenreich, one of the most underrated hitters in baseball, ripping a single. Council would score with tied at six, and Brian Williams is not a happy mound man. Bottom of the ninth score tied at six. Sean Bosky on the mound, pitching to Gary Sheffield. You know, fans in Miami have a love-hate relationship with Sheffield, but right now, it is all love. A game-winning home run, his 17th of the year, and the Marlins complete the three-game series sweep of the Orioles. The second straight game the Marlins have won on their last at bat. Their 22nd of the season day against Detroit. And Tony Clark and with a runner on second. Driven, oh, right driven and field. in the gap. It's a Blue double to the wall. Bobby Higginson would come around to score to put the Tigers up 2 to nothing. More from Tony Clark whose skipper Buddy Bell said he almost benched. He thought about it because Clark was in such a big hitting slump. Not anymore. RBI number 100 for Clark. Top four, Tigers blow it open. Davey, Davey Cruz up with one aboard. A drive, and that's over the fence for a two-run home run off of John Smoltz. Smoltz has gone after three and a third. Kerry Littenberg in for Smoltz facing Tony Clark, and Clark with a big moment with two on. He had just two homers in his previous 118 at-bats. What did I say about that slump? Gone, just like that ball. Tigers would just, oh, huge. Tigers would go on to beat Atlanta 12 to four. The this is two outs. Tyler Green then walked former Phil Charlie Hayes. Derek Jeter gives the Yanks a one nothing lead. Next batter is Jorge Posada. That one just misses. Bernie Williams makes it two to nothing, New York. But they got no more, and then in the second with Doc Gooden pitching, Tony Barron with a looper. Into right field goes former Cub Ray Sanchez, the twirling out at first. Then off the hook from Tyler Green, Barron gets revenge on Sanchez. Diving grab off the turf. It's now a 2-1 game of the fifth. The man aboard, hanging curb by Green. Chad Curtis hammers it off the scoreboard. Yanks build a 4-1 lead on Curtis's 14th of the year. They get a run back. It's 4-2. Doc Gooden with a chance to get out of it with two outs in the sixth when Kevin Stocker, who had earlier homered off him, hits a rope into the right field corner. Rico Bronia and Barron tied at four. Two aboard in the ninth. Mike Stanton on in relief. Bronia with a grounder up the middle. Sanchez can't get to the bag in time. Greg Jeffries, the potential winning run. Stadlemeyer and Torrey confer. They decide to leave Stanton in with Barron up. And he misses way off the plate on four pitches. The Phillies pull it out in the bottom of the ninth, five to four. It's a Esteban Loaiza looking strong early. Ask Manny Ramirez. Loaiza retired the first nine batters he faced. Oral Hershiser, he struggled early. Much to the Pirates' liking, Tony Womack, the slow roller, Hershiser barehands it and doesn't throw anywhere. Womack would take second on that. Two batters later, Al Martin. Hard grounder opposite way. That scores Womack from second. The Pirates had a 2-0 lead on Hershiser. There was bad blood with Oral throughout this game, but the tides would change in the fourth as Esteban Loaiza would crumble. The leadoff batter on first, Omar Vizquel, who couldn't find home plate Tuesday night, found the fences Wednesday, tying the game at two. One out later, one man on, David Justice. So Jane Dangerous, and he goes deep, but would it be deep enough? Well, it'd be deep enough to get something done. His double would score Jim Tomey, and the Indians would 
have a 3-2 lead. Your next batter, Matt Williams, on a power trip. He's 29th home run of the year, and he has a 20-game hitting streak. A five-run fourth for Cleveland to put them up 5-2, and then Hershiser does the rest, striking out Loiza, one of six batters he retired in a row, and the Indians go on to win it 7-3 for Oral Hershiser. He's trying to give Carl some offensive weekend. help, but look at Ricky Gutierrez to his knees. The backhanded stop and then the great throw to first to get him. Top of the fourth, Astros up 1-0, Jeremy Bernitz. Facing the former Brewer, Ramon Garcia, and Garcia fools Bernitz, but, and then Bernitz would stumble, and the bat you saw goes flying. Garcia, some good D. Jeff Cirillo grounds to third to help him out. This time, Gutierrez makes the stop, and the throw from his seat gets the runner at second. They don't get the DP, but Gutierrez all smiles. Same score in the sixth, Jeremy Burnett swings, and the back goes flying again. This time into the crowd. The woman who got hit with a bat, wow, she had to be taken away, and it looked... Hope she's okay, it appears to be. There's Mary Lou. Mary Lou Renton right there. Bottom of the seventh, Astros cling to one nothing lead. Two on for Tim Bogart. Into the gap, he goes. It'll drop in for a double. Richard Hidalgo will score, and Luis Gonzalez would score for RBI number 27 and 28 for Bogart, and the Astros were up three zip. They were up four zip in the ninth with two outs. Cirillo lines a shot. Tim Bogart jumps up and snags it to end the game, and finally a game that the Astros win. They stop their six-game skid. They on the mound. That's Manny Ibar, the guy they refused to trade. And Ibar is still looking for his first major league win, and Gary Getty wants to help him out. Facing Mike Cameron in a two-all game, Gaetti rifles him out and keeps it tied. Then Gaetti does it with the stick. Off Scott Ayer, airs it out for his 15th home run of the year. Cardinals take a 3-2 lead at Bush. Same score in the eighth. Two aboard, Albert Bell. Curtis King now on in relief of Ibar. Pitch gets away from another rookie, Eli Morrell, but a cannon to third, and Dave Martinez is meat. Morrell threw out two, but in the same inning, Robin Ventura keeps things alive. Albert Bell ended up walking Ventura with a bouncer, but it hits Bell in the butt. Second White Sox out of the inning. Then it's Mike Cameron's turn. Cameron, a routine grounder this time. David Bell scoops it up. Oh, he beats it out, and they load the bases in an infield hit. Pinch hitter Jeff Abbott. Bases loaded again for the White Sox, but it's right to Gaetti, and St. Louis holds on for a 4-2 win. Tarists, where's the spoon man when you need him? Bottom of the fifth, Paul Menhart, cruising with a 3-0 lead. A-Rod, it's a ball in between off Menhart's foot. Wally Jordan's throw back, they collide. They're both a little shaken up. Menhart can take a warm-up pitch. Too much pain in his foot. He hobbles off. Rodriguez decides to gut it out. After a Jay Buhner double, Rodriguez is 90 feet away, but he's not going to try to score in a wild pitch from Will Canane to Paul Sorrento. Lou Pinello wants to check him out. Says he can't run. Takes him out of the game with a rib strain. He's day-to-day. -day. Dan Wilson bangs a bases loaded knock up the middle. Pinch runner Andy Sheets scores as well as Jay Buhner. Mariners are within a run. Top of the eighth. Bases loaded. Mike Timlin in a tie game walks. Kill Viovaris with the bases loaded. Mark Sweeney gives the Padres the lead. Still 6-5. 2 2 2 out. Bases loaded. Raul Ibanez. And Chris Gomez in no man's land pulls it out as pitching. Hoping not to befall a similar nightmare in Arlington. They had to wait two hours and four minutes of rain to get it in. Then Raul Mondesi doubles past Alex Diaz. Otis Nixon scores. Domingo Sedeno throws home. To get Mike Piazza, he's meat at the plate, sliding into his all-star. Compadre. Rangers down 2-1 to one until Rodriguez does it with a stick. His 15th home run of the year, the other way to tie it at two. Same score in the eighth. Piazza, chopper up the middle. Otis Nixon rounds second. And a one-time Ranger, unfamiliar with Arlington turf as a Dodger, falls down, fell again, then got trapped in a rundown. And on a chance for Piazza's 100th RBI, comes up short. We're still at two. Tom Goodwin off Darren Dreifert. The Dodgers are trying anything to close games, but Dreifert does no better than Radinsky or L. Goodwin can fly. He gets a triple, and they score two more. They hack him on and knock off the Dodgers again, 5-2. to two. Taking Tuesday off, that is a rookie, and he looks like it. Ben Grieve, one of the top prospects in baseball. He's a right fielder. That means Matt Stairs moves over to left, and he is ever agile. Pick it up, Brad Rigby on the blast by J.T. Snow. Take it to the bottom of the second. Runner aboard off Danny Darwin. Facing Brent Maine. Gets a pitch up on his armpits, and Maine deposits it into the right field stairwell. Fifth of the year for Maine. Dusty checking out his scouting report. Not much to show about Green. 
He just eats up minor league pitching. And now he's doing it in the majors. Dave Magadan, who normally carries a piano around the bases, only has a harpsichord, and he scores easily. His first major league hit drives in a run at 3-1. to one. Brad Rigby, who has struggled all year long, knew what to do with Barry Bonds. A bullet on the inside corner, then when he faced him in the sixth, the yellow hammer. Into the seventh, six hits, two runs, six strikeouts for Rigby. Back to Green. His father, Tom, once lived with Danny Darwin in the minor leagues in Tucson. Grieve comes up huge. This double is third of the night, knocks in Tejeda, McDonald, and Magadan, this time carrying only a harmonica. Three for four, five RBIs. What a debut. The, the Jays and Robert out. Person. And Dave Malicki, who's been struggling lately, had the breaking ball On going, got Benito Santiago, Santiago, then froze Jose Carlos Cruz Delgado Jr., then Carlos Delgado, the very next batter, hit the ball and his helmet with the bat. Bernard Gilkey from off camera with a fine catch. Jays up 2-1 to one in the sixth. Carlos Bayarga with a chopper. Paul Pontrell. Catch quick. Off the mound, makes the bare hand, and then botches it. Todd Hundley comes all the way in to tie to two. Same inning, Ray Ordonez lashes a double the other way. Bayarga will come in with the go-ahead run. The Mets add another. John Franco remains nearly perfect in relief, and the Mets sweep him forward. In Boston to its sixth straight loss. Mike Lansing facing Aaron Seeley. And this was the only hit Seeley would give up. A solo home run by Mike Lansing. It's 1-0 Montreal. From there, a pitcher's duel, you might imagine, involving Carlos Perez. Just ask Michael Coleman. Perez with eight Ks. Three of those eight Ks. Coleman was the victim. Aaron Seeley equally as tough. I gave you a hint earlier about that. Getting Doug Strange looking on the heat. Four Ks. Seeley finished with the top of the seventh with John Valentin on third and two out. Perez. Just one got better, time. getting Jeff Fry to chase one down and out. A complete game two-hitter in just one, yeah, that's right, one hour, 54 minutes. What a joy. Manable. Manny Alexander, chopper up the middle, looks like two, Pat Mears. Chuck Knobloch can't handle it, the bobble, everyone's safe. Two batters later, there's still two outs, and Ryan Sandberg knows about the tricky wins off Lake Michigan. The Twins only know dome ball. Knobloch, more struggle, 17-mile-an-hour win, coughed it up, Sandberg, it's treated to a double off this. Four to one Cubs. It's five two. We take it to the fifth. And Dave Clark on his birthday slaps a clean single past Knobloch. Knocks in two more. Cubs go on to route him ten to six. They get 41 hits in the three game set with the Twins.